welcome back. As I mentioned, we have Anne Mundell Noel here with Amazing Hearing. Well, Anne, it's so nice to have you in, and you're very festive today. Thank you, Lisa. Glad to be back in the studio. It is nice to have you, and it's nice to uh, prepare for the holidays. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, we do. We're now getting together. We're in large groups of people where noise could be an issue. So I think that's a great subject that you're going to be um, touching on today. Now, um, another thing that can kind of comes about is is stress. Mm. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, if you're stressed out, how does that actually hurt our hearing? Well, it infringes on our comprehension and our understanding of words because what happens when we get stressed is that we have a lack of blood flow and the ear is one of the most sensitive organs to blood flow. Huh. So what happens when we are getting stressed is that the body is just in a tenser mode. So what I want to do today is just talk about some of the nicer or the easier things that we can do to kind of help ourselves get through that, especially people with hearing loss. Yeah, because I would imagine that it's, it's stressful and frustrating mm. if you are in a situation where maybe you're at a party and you can't hear people for whatever reason, maybe maybe your hearing aid isn't working right, or mm -hmm. you are under the additional stress of that holiday feeling. So, um, you know, what are some of the things that people can do maybe ahead of time, like before you're going to a party? Right. So what they can do first is they can physically get their hearing aids ready. So they could make sure that the batteries are fresh, the tubing, there's little filters on the end of the hearing aids, that they're clean. So physically making sure that the devices themselves are well taken care of, okay. but also their own ears, right? Clean out the wax, kind of do the things to physically get the devices ready. But the other thing that goes along with that is more that they would start to intellectually get ready. And what I mean by intellectually is that they would be proactive, uh, maybe calling their daughter or son or granddaughters and finding out information. You know, where are you going to school? What town do they live in? What are the grandkids' names? So that emotionally they are ready or intellectually excuse me, they're ready, they already know the information, so they don't misinterpret it. Oh. So they don't say, oh, did you say Alabama? You know, like oh. they know the towns or the cities to oh. be prepared intellectually. That's like doing your homework, right, before mm -hmm. you go someplace. That's a great idea. And then they could always jot it down and have it handy in a little piece of paper or something and, and take a look at it because I know I would probably not remember all of it. Yeah. So I would jot it all down, put it in right. my pocket, and then maybe look at it right before you go in. Right. And the other part about that is just being proactive so that if you know that information, you know what, they're, what you want to talk about, you can actually ask the questions. So okay. you can direct the conversation instead of being on the attack kind mm -hmm. of. You're being proactive, you're guiding it, and then you know what topics that are going to be discussed. Right. So again, anything to help reduce that stress level because you're more in control. You know, it's interesting that you mention a lot of those factors when it comes to uh, what, what you know, related to hearing, mm -hmm. is that we had spoken with a grief counselor mm. uh, not too long ago, and they, they really talked a lot about how the holidays do bring on stress, frustration, and then you add grief to that, and it's, it's a whole new ball game. So even if people are dealing with that as well, it's just one more thing to deal with. But I like the fact that you're saying do your homework, because that's what they're recommending, is that when you're trying to deal with those types of things, mm. you know, do your homework and know ahead of time some of the things that you might be stressed out about. Right, because we can only control what we can control, right? right? So by being proactive, even by emotionally um, taking some rest. So people go, oh, I'm too anxious, I'm too nervous, I have too much going on. Take five minutes, even by slowing down for five minutes and resting and really putting your feet up, it's amazing how your brain can reset, but yeah. more importantly, it helps with the hearing because again, like we talked about physically, the stress and the hearing go together. So right. if my concentration t isn't as strong, then I might misinterpret. I might not hear clearly mm -hmm. or I heard it, but I'm not comprehending it because I'm too nervous, right? So by just yeah. resting the body, it's the five minutes will, the siesta is a good thing. Yeah, no, that's a good, that's a good idea. And yeah. then let me ask you one thing because holidays and drinking, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand, right? Mm. So let's say someone uh, is stressed out. So they're going to go, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll have a cocktail right when I get there. Does that impair your hearing? 
it impairs your comprehension and your, mm -hmm. that would impair your cognition or your memory, just like anybody without a hearing loss. Okay. But I would suspect that people with hearing loss, that would be a greater impact to them. I see. The other part is just them taking control even of their physical environment, yeah. right? So trying to eliminate some of the barriers that come. Um, if you're gonna be in a group where there is a lot of noise, set your expectations to say, I don't expect that I'm gonna hear everyone, but go in with an expectation to say, I'm gonna hear well one-on-one -on -one with you. I'm gonna pick a certain person, I'm gonna move myself to a, an area where it's a little bit more quiet or secluded mm -hmm. so that I can have a conversation. Because again, it's about relationship. It's yeah. about being a part. And so some people go in and say, well, I didn't hear you know, her across the table. Well, then don't have that expectation. Hear the person next to you on okay. either side and carry on the conversation conversation that way that will help a lot that's you know and I think we have so many expectations of ourselves you know all the time mm -hmm. but then when you do it during the holidays it's even worse mm. so that's that's a really great thing even if you don't have a hearing loss just I think I'm going to go to a party and I'm like all right no I'm not going to hear that person way over there but I'm just going to focus but like you said you're preparing yourself right which I think is really it's it's really great advice so thank you for sharing that what are um what are some of the things that people can do uh, with hearing loss in terms of succeeding with communication. So you kind of touched on some things. So one of the things, again, is the barriers, right, of the table or the size of the room. So again, trying to seclude yourself or get on that one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you can also do is to even if you're not going to hear because the background noise is overwhelming, even people with normal hearing have trouble hearing in a party. Yeah. But is to take it in. Enjoy just being there in the moment right. and take it for what it is. But the other part is you can strive for the one-on-one, -on -one, but if you don't get it, or I guess something that would help if you are not hearing impaired and you're trying to talk to somebody who's hearing impaired, that would be to talk slower. Oh, okay. When we're in that background noise and it's so intense, we should slow down and give the person time to lip read the lips mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. as being able to comprehend the conversation. Okay. So that would be a big barrier. The other one is taking your hands away. People put their hands in front of their mouth. Mm -hmm. um, the masks, as we know, were a barrier. Thankfully, we don't have to wear those indoors anymore. So we're okay with that. That helps yeah. with that lip reading. Right. But those are little things that make a big difference. Now there are some devices that can be used to assist mm -hmm. in hearing in crowded areas. What are, what are some of those? So things that are available are there is uh, microphones that people can use that can connect to their hearing aids. Mm -hmm. But one of the new things that is out is we have a program now called Amptify. And it's actually a hearing therapy program. Oh. And so um, that is something that we want to talk about. I don't know if now is the right time to, to talk about that. Yes, absolutely. So um, the hearing therapy program is 12 weeks long, and it is something where there's three components to it. Mm -hmm. You get the um, audiology counselor, which mm -hmm. is not a part of our office, but is a, a, a um, audiologist nationwide. Mm -hmm. You get group counseling, and then you get games, and you okay. get to play the games all year long. Oh, that's that's awesome. Like. Well, how long do the lessons, is this, a, is this an online thing or is this an in-person? So it's an app on your phone. Oh. So the nice part is you do it when you are ready to do it. So oh, okay. as you're sitting there for between appointments or you've got 10 minutes, you can do the, game, you can do the um, classes. So that's mm -hmm. 12 weeks long. And they normally would take 10 minutes. Right? Oh, so there are things about learning about hearing loss, things that we're talking about right here. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great program. It's $150. Mm -hmm. You can sign up through our office or you can sign up through Amptify, the program there. Okay. The difference, the price is the same. The difference is if you sign up through Amazing Hearing, we give you a year subscription and through Amptify, you only get three months. Oh so my. it's a big savings. Oh, it sure is. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and I would assume that you could help them if they had some questions here and there For about sure. it. For right? sure. Okay. All they need to do is call the office and we'd be okay. happy to talk to them more about it. All right, excellent. And then real quick, I want to talk about your uh, charity. Mm -hmm. You guys are heading out in January for uh, a, a very long trip out there. And, and why are you going and what are some things that you'd use to help? 
Oh, thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, we are going to bring medical help to the people of Uganda, and we hope to see, last time we saw 2,600 people in four days wow. with $5,000 worth of medicine. So wow. this year we have a larger team going. We're gonna have three medical uh, missions going, but we're also going to bring water and to just bring hope to people. Yeah. I mean, they really need it, and when they um, see people coming to just wanting to help them, they are so appreciative. So what you can do to help is we collect plastic bottles and aluminum cans in our office, mm -hmm. anything with the California CRV. So okay. it has to have that CRV. Okay. Not just recycling, but the California CRV. Uh -huh. You can drop it off at the office anytime, and we use that money towards the water wells in Uganda. That is great. And you know, I, I imagine you must have an awful lot of water bottles that just keep collecting. So do you take them in every week or how does that work? So the plastic bottles and aluminum cans are at um, Serrano Intermediate, oh, which okay. is a school in Lake Forest, and we store them there, CR&R Recycling, I'll give them a plug. Oh, yeah. um, they have graciously donated a trailer and we fill that trailer up. Um, and when we fill it up four times, we can put in a well. So oh, wow. I That's weekly great. go to Serrano to collect the bottles and cans, awesome. and it's been a great program. That is great. Well, you are so kind to do that, and mm. thank you so much for visiting us during this time. And uh, we will let everybody know how to get in touch with you. We have a slide, and we'll let them know so they can contact you. And you are located in the Trader Joe's Shopping Center, correct? Correct. And you guys are open throughout the rest of the month? We are. We are actually open Saturdays and evenings by appointment as well. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so remember that if you are going to be at holiday parties, make sure that you give your hearing a check and also that stress level. We'll be right back.